my gosh, I don't know if I shared this with you, but if you look around, the setting is a bit different than some of my past videos. That is because we have just purchased a home. And during that process, I found something that I knew we had, but I kind of forgotten about. And this is our wedding book. Oh my gosh, look at our wedding book. Why I'm sharing this with you is because when I first got married, the conversations that I had with my husband about finances look a lot differently than they do now after being married for almost a decade. And honestly, I wish someone would have had a conversation with me about how to manage money with my partner. So whether you're dating and thinking about marriage or you've been married for nearly a decade but still arguing with your partner about money, today in this video, we are going to talk about managing money with your partner. And this is so critical because we know that financial stress could lead to a divorce. And in fact, 50% of marriages still in divorce. Unfortunately, because we don't learn about money growing up, how to manage it, how to talk about it, oftentimes we forget that we will have to do this with someone else, which complicates things a bit. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Brittany Helford, your internal medicine physician and your wealth coach. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to optimize your finances and hopefully create financial intimacy that will bring you closer together instead of pulling you apart. Now, I was on a call, on a free market research call with a woman physician and she is partner. She's been married for nearly seven years and she told me that every time she talks to a partner about money, they get into an argument. So much so that they have not had a conversation about money in over two years. Now, I would not advise that because if you are partnered and you have shared expenses and you have shared goals, then your finances need to be a part of the conversation. So if you are a woman in healthcare and you want to share a little bit with me about your finances and for me to give you my two cents, then click the link below and schedule your 20 minute woman in healthcare market research call. In this call, we'll talk about some of your fears, some of your joys and your finances, and then we will switch the hot seat so that you can ask me a few questions, but how do we actually have these conversations so that they feel comfortable, so that it's something that we actually want to have without it causing conflict. Now, the first thing that you need to do before you sit at the table to have that conversation with your partner about finances is to check yourself. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. But the reason why I say that is because oftentimes, especially if we've had past conversations that have gone wrong, we bring a lot of emotions to the table when we're talking about money. Money is emotional for all of us. If you've been watching my channel, then you know that I talk about the psychology of money and the emotional side of money. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, then hit that button below so that you can get all of this goodness every single week. When you come to the table to talk to your partner about finances, you need to come to the table reconciling your own emotions about money. For example, if you've been looking at the bank statements and you feel that you all are overspending and you may not have enough, that may evoke a sentiment of fear, of frustration, maybe that your partner spent money on something and you have the goal to pay down your debt. It might evoke a certain emotion of inadequacy. If you're looking at the bank accounts and your partner is making a lot more money than you are and bringing more to the family. Wherever you are, my first advice is for you to try to reconcile all of that. Bring yourself back to neutral. And if you have frustration with your partner, give your partner the benefit of a doubt. If you enter into a conversation with frustration, it's just going to brew greater frustration and you're not going to have a great result at the end. So you want to make sure that you reconcile your own emotions before you have a conversation with your partner about money. Now, once you've done that, you want to have a conversation that's not actually about money. <laughs> oh, what? Yes, because when we're talking about the nitty gritty stuff about, oh, how did you spend this? Or why did you do this? And this is the number here, this is the number there. Sometimes it can cause our partner, depending if they want to have this conversation or not, to put on right the headphones and really block out any of the information that you're providing them. It might cause our partner to feel very defensive, especially if we're pointing fingers and talking about line item by line item. Instead, I want you to talk about really big, broad discussions. One potential open statement can be, hey babe, I know we set this goal to achieve this. How do you think we're doing with that goal? Or 
maybe you haven't even set any goals and you can say hey you know i was watching this video of this crazy doctor who told me that we should talk about our money and <laughs> she suggested that we create a financial goal in the next year what should we be working on as a family as a couple together in our finances in three years what would that look like in five years what would that look like to start to dream together when you can dream together then that's going to allow you to have this shared vision not just your vision of what you want or his vision or her vision of what they want it will allow you all to come together and that might say oh you know we haven't taken a vacation in a while i would really love to go to colombia for example my husband and i we want to go to colombia or i I want to go to Colombia. I don't know if he so much wants to go to Colombia, but he has allowed me to choose the location. So I'm really excited about that. So you might say, oh, I want to go to Colombia. Let's look up different cities that we can go to. Maybe we want to go to Medellin or we want to go to Cartagena and really start to look up and explore some of that. Maybe you want to look at flights. How much do flights actually cost to travel from our city to Colombia? And when you all can start to dream, it's going to help you to bring yourselves together on a shared page and then you can jump into the numbers. Next, when you're talking about the numbers, Take a deep breath and come from a position of curiosity. You can say something to your partner as if, let's look at the bank statements and the transactions because you know if we want to accomplish this goal, then we need to start savings today. If we want to have this luxurious trip to Columbia, let's actually put together a budget and make a strategy for us to accomplish that goal. Part of the strategy would be to look at your past expenses. Let's look at how we're spending our money now so that we can better utilize our money to put more away for our goal without compromising anything else that we're doing. And upon pulling up those credit card statements, upon pulling up those bank statements, as you're going line by line, you should come to your partner from a position of curiosity. I see that you spent $500 on some tennis shoes. How are those shoes working for you? I see you haven't put them on yet. How are you feeling about those shoes? They might say, actually, they hurt my feet. I need to return those shoes. Thank you for the reminder. Or they might say, oh, you know what? I'm just waiting to save up to purchase this shirt that I want to wear with those shoes. And from coming from a position of curiosity, you don't point fingers. You don't want to say, you spent $500 on some shoes. That is too much money. That could be money that we're using to pay off debt or to invest. Make sure you approach it from a position of curiosity. Another thing to be really curious about is, you know, we just spoke about this trip that we want to take together and we need to save up money for that. What would be your approach to save money? Your partner might say, instead, there have been a lot of emails that have been sent out about extra shifts that I can pick up. I'm thinking that I wanna pick up an additional shift every single month and use that money to save for our trip. Your partner might also say, you know, I've been spending a lot of money on eating out, and so I want to decrease our expenses on eating out. With you even pointing a finger at some of the behaviors, they can come up with a strategy on their own. And when you allow them the latitude to do that, it will allow you to have the freedom to not have to monitor and nitpick about their spending habits or their saving habits because your partner has created that strategy. And <laughs> this is the best tip. I wish someone would have told me this before I got married. The person that you dated and how they spent their money while you were dating is effectively how they will spend their money when you're married. If you see that your partner likes to spend money on eating out, then that will likely be the way that they spend money when you are married. If you see that your partner is spending a lot of money on self-care, then that will likely be the way that they spend money in marriage because they have created a habit of doing so. I don't want to say that we are fixed creatures. I am all about adopting a growth mindset. And I know that my partner is different. He has evolved from where he was when we first started dating, but he's still the same man. <laughs> There's been a little bit of evolution there, but he's still the same man. And the reason why I bring this up is to not say that the person is never going to change or you can never turn a spender into a saver and vice versa. I say it to just emphasize that you should respect who your partner is because that spender might actually help the saver to enjoy life more. If you amass millions of dollars, but your life is miserable, what is the purpose of that money? And the saver might actually help the spender to be thoughtful about the way that they're spending their money to foster joy. So 
we don't want to change our partners. We got with that person for a reason. And honestly, in my relationship, I was very extremely all the way frugal. <laughs> I can recall that my husband asked me when we were dating, he's like, Brittany, why are all of our dates on a discount? Like Groupon was my thing. That all of our dates were on Groupons. And sometimes I would spend money on something that I thought was of good value and my gosh, I was just being cheap because <laughs> it was a horrible show or presentation or meal. And instead I would have preferred to enjoy the meal a little bit more, enjoy the performance a bit more and spend the extra dollars. So my husband has brought me along to understand that it's not just that you're spending little, but what are you going to get in return? And I have brought him along to look for discounts from time to time. We are with our partners and so therefore we need to respect and appreciate who they are as individuals and allow them to act in their individuality without us nitpicking and trying to change them. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn a little bit more about how to have money conversations with your partner, I've created this free guide down below. Just click the link and you can have access to some of the things that I work with women on in navigating money with their partner. My goal is to make sure that women are empowered and having these money conversations with their partner so that they can be part of the decision making. For too long, we as women have expressed deference to men specifically, if you're in a heterogeneous relationship, to manage the finance. They bring home the bacon and they manage it all. Unfortunately, that has left us to feel as if we don't have control, we don't have the confidence, and because women live longer, we are more likely to live paycheck to paycheck in retirement and not have enough savings. So I want this money conversation to foster harmony with your partner, to ensure that you can increase the longevity of your partnership and keep you involved in the management of your finances to build generational wealth for years to come. And if you're a woman in healthcare and you're like, this is great, Dr. Halpert, I need a little bit more than a free guide. I want you to help to coach me on how to manage my money. Then feel free to hit that link for a discovery call with me. And I have brought radiologists, nurse practitioners, therapists along on that journey so that they can foster intimacy with their partners, make sure that they have the confidence to manage their money so that they can really embrace who they are as an individual and allow money to be a tool to create more joy in their life. And if you want to know more about the do's and don'ts of investing, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up because that will be the next video. All right, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.